Welcome, 33rd blend of Wining with Joe here at Herzog Wine Cellars. Today, post-fermentation, extended maceration, and why we're doing it. So, please join us, 33rd blend, part three, bin fermentation, here at Herzog Wine Cellars, Wining with Joe. Enjoy. Good morning. We are standing in front of our refrigerated truck uh, where we have 12 bins of beautiful Cabernet Sauvignon from Sonoma County that has finished fermentation about a week ago. And now uh, we are going to drain and press it later today, which is something that we'll show you that'll be a lot of fun. But first we're going to talk about extended maceration. So if fermentation finished a week ago, why have we left the grapes in contact with the juice? Why have we left it in the bins to just macerate and uh, hang out together for a week? That's a very good question, and that's because we're doing extended maceration. It's a technique where the theory is that short chain tannins will polymerize into long chain tannins, having the pleasant effect of creating a softer mouthfeel and enhancing structure, stability of color, and the finish of the wine. So let's go take a look. So you can see here in this bin that we have had the cap fall into solution, which is one visual indication that fermentation has finished and we have the pooling of liquid over here, allowing the grape skins and seeds to come in contact with the oak that is submerged in these bins. And you can see over here in bin seven, that the cap is still floating a little bit higher than the other bins. This is one of the bins that we did not inoculate for fermentation. So it's not quite as dry as the bins that we fermented with yeast. But worry not, we're gonna press these separately. We're gonna keep them separate from the rest and blend them in later. 